Okay, so we do a podcast. We do. Some may have heard of it. Some may have. Of which you are a pastor. I am. And on. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Okay. So, first question is, uh huh, like, what happens if, what happens if we get famous? Because we ain't famous yet. We're but, not famous. But you could be, you know, sort of famous. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Like or okay. super famous, right. depending on how this goes. Like a minor Christian celebrity. Minor, yes. Yeah. Right. Oh God. Help As me a all. pastor. Okay. Right. Okay. Also, you're already a pastor. I am. So, has there ever been times when your influence mm -hmm. got to you and made you want to do bad stuff? And how do you think that's going to go moving forward, say, if you gain more notoriety? Okay. And has there ever been, like like temptations at church like i know i've come to your church mm -hmm. and so i know the temptation from from me was there you know okay. because i look good and stuff but you know has there ever been <laughs> okay <laughs> has there ever been... how do you think that's this is gonna go All right yeah based on you being a pastor <laughs> okay so I, I can honestly say this, like, mm -hmm. I, I have, I have actually never considered, like, having an affair with, like, what? no, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, if, yeah, ah. if, <laughs> if y'all can't see Nate right now, he's presently, uh, yeah, I don't know what he's doing, he's stretching, flexing, <laughs> Slightly. Anyway, you know, answer the question. Sorry, all right. So anyway, um, <laughs> so I I can honestly say like I have never considered having an affair with someone I've been a pastor of. Okay. Like so. So everyone I, else is fair I, game. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> you just <laughs> kill me. This is how stuff gets. <laughs> this how. This is how lives get ruined. <laughs> That's going to be like one of those 30 second reels that we do and my whole life is destroyed. And so, oh God, I need to have more control of the editing on this one. All right. So, I send every episode to yeah, you. Yeah, I'm for... cutting out like this whole part. All right. So, no, you're not. <laughs> nope. I, so when I was a young pastor, mm -hmm. I'd only been pastoring for maybe, I don't know, th three years, maybe somewhere around there, two mm -hmm. to three years. Um, and we were, so our church at the time was part of a network of churches. Mm -hmm. And so I was a young senior pastor. We had planted a church. And so like a few years later, I'm at this retreat where the, where all the pastors and leaders of the, of the churches gathered every year and. So we're at this like annual retreat for this network of churches. And one of the older pastors was speaking one morning and he, he was preaching and at, and he was, and he was just preaching on just the realities of what it was like to be a pastor or a Christian leader. Mm -hmm. um, the influence we have, those kind of things, um, calling us to live holy lives as people were looking at us, that kind of stuff. And as he was preaching, at some point, he just looks right at me and he just goes, Joseph, one mistake, one mistake can ruin everything. And does that make you nervous? Uh, yeah. Because I feel like sitting on this side of the table, I could have a few mistakes because I'm not a pastor. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But like one mistake for you, that's horrible. Yeah. And it just does that make you? I mean, like for real, does that make you nervous? Uh, it's it it rightfully scares the bejeebies out. Of okay, me. yeah, and like when he was saying that, it was interesting. Like, so he's saying that, and like I'm like, I don't even know how to express how I felt because he was looking <clears throat> right at me. Joseph, one mistake, mm -hmm. one mistake will 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 one mistake can ruin you can ruin your ministry, can ruin your family, one mistake. And 
it was just like, I, and I don't, I don't know if I was scared. I don't know. Like, I really can't describe the feeling of it. And, but then one of the pastors after the meeting, who was like more of a mentor to me, came to me. He was like, Joseph, is there anything I should know? Because he looked right at you. <laughs> I was like, no, I can promise you. There's nothing that, you know, it's going on. But it's it has stuck with me ever since then mm-hmm. of, hey, one mistake can not only ruin ministry that I'm involved in, ruin my family, but it can mar the name of Christ and it can destroy the lives of other people that looked up to me as right. as a pastor. <clears throat> um, and I have seen that in my own friends or even in my own family when they were at churches and their pastor falls into sexual sin um, or you know, falls into drug abuse and that's happened, um, Mm -hmm. was family, a family friend or a family member of ours. And, and and some other things have been horrible too. But anyway, like where it really does, it, it really can ruin lives of people that look up to those individuals. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it, it is, it is sobering to think that one mistake can mar the name of Christ and can really have that large of a detrimental effect on other people. Are you nervous about if this thing took off? Because it could. Yeah. So, I mean, the same way I was talking about earlier about social media, right? Mm -hmm. And its power and its influence and what it does. Um, And (laughs) because it has its benefits, right? Like the, the power of social media is that you can reach people that you can, that you're hoping, hoping to have an influence, a positive influence on people. Right. But then the flip side of that is it can make you start feeling a little too good about yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, like even in a, e- even in small ways, um, you know, like we're, we're at a small church and as that's just grown a lot for, for our church grown a lot in the last, you know, year and a half to two years. And so, and that's, and that's fantastic, but it, it, but it it's it scares me somewhat too, um, okay. Because like you know you hear people say, hey, you know, hey pastor, you know, well, you know, we're here because of you, or we want to join the church because of you, and that 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 never that that always scares me. Um, not just because of I think I may do something wrong, but you don't want it to be built around a personality. Right. Right. So if I'm going to critique large churches like mega churches for being built around personalities, I have to realize that can happen in a church our size as well. And so. So an example of this was like, so a couple, I guess it was this last, well, two Saturday nights ago, I was um, and I was at the church. I was getting things ready in the sanctuary. I was making sure the. All, the bulletins were all ready and the pews were all good, all that kind of stuff. And uh, visitor cards were in their place, pins, all that kind of stuff. You know, doing that on a Saturday night. And because I, I wasn't going to be there the next day. I was not going to be at the church the next day because I was officiating a wedding. Okay. Um, and so, and I was as I was about to leave the sanctuary, I just, I was just burdened just to, just to pray for the, for the, for that service the next morning. And so I did. And, but in my prayer, like part of it was like, God show up in power. God show up in authority when like do a move when I'm not here. If there's anyone that thinks that this church is growing because of me, like let it end. Cause, cause you do the best moves (laughs) and you're just hoping that a good one happens. (laughs) No, I mean like, but you know what I mean? Like I'm like, Lord, let people have an encounter with you. Right that is so real and so true and so genuine that has nothing to do with Joseph preaching or leading the service or whatever. Right. Like, and, and so to, to where you just go, God, you know, where people can say, this is the Lord doing things. Um, and so, yeah, so those things it does, like, I, 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 I can be concerned, um, you know, and there's a few things that I already have in place that I have mm-hmm. set in place. And some of them I've had set in place since the, since I began ministry, you know, or was, you know, 
in uh, as a senior pastor in 05 when we started the church then, so about 19 years ago. So, so since I've been a senior pastor for about 19 years, I've had certain rules in place or guidelines, mm -hmm. guardrails, however you want to phrase it, in place. Um, I, I don't meet with women alone. I just don't do it. Um, you know, and if I just absolutely have to, there's, there's no other way around it. I will meet in the fellowship hall, cameras on, like, and our cameras are always running anyway, but mm -hmm. like, it'll, it'll be out in the open. Um, and so like, but I will never, never meet with like a, like a woman alone in my office. Um, and so uh, I do not travel for ministry alone, um, whether that is stateside or whether that's international. Um, the only exception I make for that is if like, like, so for example, there's a conference that I speak at every year in Charlotte, but I stay, I stay with a with family friend or not family, but with friends right there. So I'll drive there, but I know that I'm staying at their house and going to be with them, yeah. you know? Um, and, and so, but I don't, I try not to travel for ministry alone. Um, and, and then I have someone that I confess my sins to on a regular basis. Um, you know, we meet and they ask questions and I ask questions of them. And, and so there's confession, I have accountability at our church, right? I'm not the solo hero leader. I don't have veto power. There is board, there's a board, there are, there are elders. Um, and I continue to have my alone time with Jesus. And I do think that's like the piece that starts to starts to erode in a lot of these quote unquote celebrity pastors, but I think pastors in general, mm -hmm. I think it that starts to slowly erode because you you find yourself so busy with all these earth things. And and even in like and then the only time you're reading the Bible is to prep a sermon and right. not to just be with Jesus. And so like and I have to be mindful of that. I can fall into that trap of where I'm like, man, you know, I'd rather read what I'm about to preach on mm. instead of just reading something completely different just to be with Jesus. Um, and I and and so I think all of those things are important. But I think for me, in conjunction with my alone time with Jesus, the best thing I can do to prevent an affair is to stay best friends with my wife, to spend time with her, to stay connected to her. To have a healthy marriage, emotionally, mentally, physically, sexually, you know, spiritually, I think that is the single biggest thing that I can do. Um, you know, my wife's my best friend. I'd rather spend time with her than anyone else. And so, I, for me, that I think that's the biggest guardrail I can set up and have is a is a healthy marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully, if I'm healthy in my marriage and healthy with Jesus. And have healthy understandings of power and power dynamics in church, and don't allow those things to get to my head. Um, and realize that when, like, because the goal for me is never to have someone say, "Pastor, that was a really good sermon." Okay. Like they can say that. That's fine. Like I don't mind. Like they say that's fine. Someone's going to listen to this podcast and say it to me on Sunday. That's fine. But you know, <laughs> it's they can say that. That's fine. <laughs> but my my goal is for them to say. I was tra God is transforming my heart. Okay. God's transforming my life. Um, not just that I said a good sermon or I shared or communicated well, but that God did something in their life. Mm -hmm.